السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We begin as we begin all of our talks by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is worthy of being praised and by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path and we seek Allah's refuge from the evil of our souls and the consequences of our actions. Indeed, whomever Allah guides, no one can ever misguide him. And whomever Allah azza wa jal chooses to misguide, no one can guide him back to the straight path. Indeed, I bear witness and I testify, a, t- a testification of certainty, of yaqeen, that there is no object, no being, no deity, no God, that is worthy of our worship, our veneration, our love, our hope, our prostration, our dua, our sajda, other than Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Arabi al-Qurashi is the final prophet and the most perfect messenger that ever walked on the face of this earth. As to what follows, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, verily, Allah Azza wa Jal is the best of all planners. And it is indeed ironic that I stand in front of you today after having recorded two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, in a city far, far away, a short brief message telling you to come to this conference, but also excusing myself and saying, unfortunately, I will not be able to make it this year for for reasons that are very complicated. I've just come from another conference in America, the largest conference there, and I said I cannot make it to this conference. Yet Allah Azza wa Jal had willed that I would be standing in front of you today. And even though it was not my plan, not because I didn't want to be here, but because of logistical factors, Allah Azza wa Jal had something planned. And indeed the plan of Allah is always best. So I am humbled and I am proud and I am very, very, very honored to stand in front of you today to participate in the greatest and the grandest and the most magnificent conference that this country, inshallah ta'ala, has ever seen. Now the talk that I have today is about etiquettes of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we engage in a conversation, in an appeal? How do we ask Allah and beseech Him for what we want? And I thought that instead of listing for you a bunch of points, why not take one of the most important stories in the Qur'an and analyze this story in light of the etiquettes of beseeching Allah. And the story that I'm going to mention and discuss in detail is the story that touches all of us here because it talks about the beginning of creation. It is the story of the Genesis itself. It is the story of how mankind came on earth. It is the story of creation. It is the story of Adam alayhi salam and Iblis and what Iblis did to our father Adam. In light of this story, in light of the story of Adam alayhi salam and what the arch enemy of mankind Iblis did to him, and in light of their responses and reactions, let us see what we can benefit and how we can gain in learning how best to have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we learn of the etiquettes of dua in the story of the creation? First and foremost, before even Adam opened his mouth, before even Adam said anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed Adam with everything that he could ever imagine. Allah Azza wa Jal gave Adam Jannah and everything in Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal gave Adam his wife Hawa. Allah Azza wa Jal gave him the best clothing and the best garment and the best food and the best place and the best lodging. Without even Adam raising his hands to Allah and saying, Oh Allah, give me this. And this shows us Many Muslims wonder, why is it that Allah provides for people who don't even ask Him? Why is it that Allah takes care of those who even are so arrogant that they reject His existence? And in the story of Adam, we learn, Allah is Ar-Rahim. 
Allah is Al-Wadud, Allah is Al-Rahman, Allah is Al-Kareem, Allah is Al-Mannan, Allah is the ever-loving, the ever-merciful, the ever-generous. He is the Lord and the Rabb. He will take care of you because He created you. He will take care of you because He is your Lord. Without even you asking Him, there is an element of taking care. There is an element of nourishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant even if you do not ask Him that. And we see this in the story of Adam alayhi salam. Without even doing anything, Allah told Adam, وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ We said, O oh Adam, you and your wife, you live in Jannah. وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا And you eat bountifully. You eat whatever you want. Ragada means the most luxurious fruits, the most luxurious meats. Eat as much as you want. So Allah Azza wa Jal blessed this to Adam without even Adam making dua. And that is because, as we said, Allah is the Rabb. And the meaning of Rabb, many of us don't even understand what does it mean Rabb. The meaning of Rabb is the one who will nourish and take care of me. From Tarbiya. Tarbiya, right? The same root. The meaning of Rabb, He shall nourish, He shall envelope me in His mercy. And Allah is the Rabb of the Muslim and the non-Muslim. Allah is the Rabb of the creation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil. What Muslim mean? Rabbil Mu'mineen? No. Rabbil Alameen. Allah is the Rabb of the entire creation. Therefore, He shall take care of the creation, even if the creation is too arrogant to acknowledge Him or to worship Him. The story goes on of Adam and Iblis. And we know that Adam was told something. And Iblis was told something. And we know that the both of them disobeyed what they were told. Adam was told not to eat of the fruit. Iblis was told to prostrate. Adam was misguided and deceived by Iblis. And he ate from that fruit. And Iblis was told to prostrate. And he refused to prostrate. So the both of them, in one sense, they fell into an error. But what was the response of both of these individuals? Was it the same? What was the prophetic response of Adam? And what was the satanic response of Iblis? Adam, when he ate of the tree, he realized that I have done a mistake. And so he said, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh my Lord, I have wronged myself. I've sinned. He made a dua. And this is an essential dua. We're going to come back to it over and over again. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh my Lord, I have wronged myself. It's my fault. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا If you don't have mercy on us, if you don't forgive us, لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ We have no hope. There is no other hope. We shall be of the losers. There is nothing else on earth that can save us other than you, O Allah Azza wa Jal. If you don't help us, forgive us, save us, nothing can save us. This was the response of Adam alayhi salam. What was the response of Iblis? Iblis alayhi la'natullah. When he did the sin that he did, when he refused to prostrate, he didn't recognize a sin. He didn't say, oh Allah, I made a mistake. Rather, in his sheer arrogance, he accused Allah of the crime. And he said, قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي He said, O oh my Rabb, because you have misguided me, you have misled me, you have betrayed me. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ Compare the two responses. Adam says, I've made a mistake, O oh Allah, forgive me. Iblis says, it's all your fault, O oh Allah, you did it. You were the one who forced me to do this. Notice the response. This shows us the difference between iman and kufr. The difference between servitude to Allah and arrogance in rejecting that servitude. On the one hand, the worshipping of Allah and the making dua to Allah. And on the other hand, the arrogance, the refusal to make dua. And that is why of the signs of faith is that that person must make dua to Allah. And of the signs of a lack of faith is that person will refuse to make dua. Like Iblis. Of the signs of faith, we learn from the story of Adam, of the signs of iman, it is a part of iman to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a sign of arrogance and kufr to reject that dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah azza wa jalla says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord has said, make dua to me. 
I shall respond to you. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِلِينَ Those who are too arrogant to worship me. Notice, your Lord has said, make dua. To me, I shall respond. If you're too arrogant to make dua, these are the ones upon whom the punishment will come. There's two categories. You either make dua or you're too arrogant to make dua. Adam was of the first category. He made dua. Iblis was of the second category. He refused to make dua. Making dua is a sign of iman. Making dua is a part and parcel of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because when you have faith in Allah, you recognize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. When you have faith in Allah, you affirm, Allah cares about me. Allah loves me. Allah hears my prayer. And Allah is capable of responding to my prayer. Therefore, when you believe in an all-loving, all-powerful, all-merciful God, you must raise your hands to that God. And you must say, Oh Allah, give me this. Oh Allah, 